Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening, gives us more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past in order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Brethren, we're going to be talking about what's going on over there in the Suez Canal and how this ship being stuck and the way that it's stuck and the things that you're going to see on painting on the ships and the meanings behind it is showing you that this is all part of the prophecy and the prophecy of taking away the blessings of the Edomites and the other nations. And you're going to see so many different things in this video that's going to prove to you that like it's just it's the most high. Once you realize that everything that we're seeing happening right now is all about the most high showing us how we've entered into the three and a half, last three and a half years of tribulation upon the Gentiles. And how the most high is leaving signs everywhere. But if you have not made the connections between Britain, Ireland, and the United States, and our lands, and how we were over there first, and how that was kind of like the Middle Earth, like, like, like their middle point, their jumping off point to coming over here and taking over these lands, and if they have not always been there, and that our lands are over there as well, in Britain and Ireland, I'm sure other, other lands over there also in Europe that are ours, we're just going to concentrate on those ones. The ley lines are all over the place. The ley lines give power to the people who possess them. That's the way the Most High had set it up and gave us those lands in the first place. Hold on fast. So we got a little information to kind of get into this right now, okay? And like I said, look um, before we go, look at the timing. Our New Year's was the 20th. I just had the video I just put up earlier discussing how on the 21st, the numbers came out and they jumped for the plague. For nine weeks, the Gentiles enjoyed great news, the lowering of the numbers of the amount of cases in the lands. But as soon as we got to our New Year, the first day, we went from 19 states seeing uh, growth in cases to 30. The scales had tipped to now there's more states experiencing more cases. Now, this event, I think, took uh, actually happened yesterday or Tuesday or, or Wednesday with the ship getting stuck. And we're going to talk about that right now. Still, first week of our new year and you got cases jumping up you got this ship which is now paralyzing trade routes and there's actually part of the trade routes and on the on the waterways are all part of the blessings see a lot of, a lot of the other nations don't want you to know that that that's all part of commerce and uh economies and uh, i just as soon as the news of this ship getting stuck the prices of like gas and oil, I think, went up 6% just that day. See, just when they thought they were going to be able to get back to normal, the Most High throws this monkey wrench into their plans. So it's like, no matter how much they try their best to make things go back to their normal, the Most High is going to stop them at every turn. Right here is going to be the picture of this huge ship that got turned and has run aground. 
they're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch a little quick little video on it, but um, just look at that word evergreen. We're gonna talk about that. I'm talking about the name of the ship as well, and how these means things as far as for um, prophecy. Okay. So this is what's just turned everything upside down in the world of trade. Okay, I'm going to watch a little bit of this video right here. Okay. I think one of the brothers sent me this video as well. So thank you. You know, it just kind of most high used you to give me this here. And I did a little bit of research and we're going to get some more information right now. Okay. You're going to see it with spiritual eyes. One ship at the center of a major marine traffic jam. Sudden strong winds, even a dust storm, likely pushed Evergreen's ship, the Ever Given, off its path. So much so that the ship became wedged sideways across the Suez Canal, wall to wall. Tugboats and cranes are trying to free it, but the ship is massive and heavy. It holds 20,000 shipping containers. If they cannot free her from the banks, then they've got to find a way to offload some of those containers to reduce the weight of the ship so that she can actually get... Uh, be free to, to float. The Ever Given is blocking one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. 50 ships a day normally use this passage. Each of these dots is one waiting to get through. The Swiss Canal accounts for about 10% of global oil shipments each year. Oil prices climbed today more than 5%, but the impact may not last if the ship is dislodged quickly. All of this hinges on this being resolved in kind of a, a day or two. Uh, once you get into a, you know, a couple days longer, a week, this, it becomes a very, very different ballgame. There is an alternative route. Instead of cutting through Egypt, ships can also go around the southern tip of Africa. However, that takes about a third more time and more fuel. And that's part of the reason why people use the Suez Canal, because it's quicker and cheaper in, in cost. <clears throat> Taking the long way could have cascading effects for buyers expecting shipments quickly and for the price of delivery. Consequences of the world's reliance on a single choke point. But building a backup canal would be costly, and most of the time, ships sail through smoothly. In less one in a million you know, chance a ship gets stuck sideways, everything is working pretty well. Still, for the shipping industry, that one in a million is just the latest unexpected setback in a year, unlike any other. Jacqueline Hansen, CBC News. So, this is a one in a million chance of this happening. And it happened, it just so happened to be going on on our new year. Now, also listen to what made this ship supposedly flip a turn and get stuck wind are you serious wind or maybe a sandstorm they're not sure come on now so you guys talked about how heavy this ship is and how you can't turn it but it could just be turned with a little bit of wind yeah it can be turned a little bit of wind from our angels from the most high Maybe, with, maybe from the angel of wind, one of the angels of the earthly mother. That sounds more like it, but they're always trying to minimize the hand of the Most High. The Most High turned that ship, ran it aground. In our new year, on the week, first week of our new year. So just look at these events that are already happening. You got, you know, the you already had the... Um, the states and their numbers of positivity going up on Sunday, the 21st. You got this ship at a one in a million chance of it getting turned and getting stuck, running aground. They blame it on wind. Well, that must have been a hell of a gust of wind to make it turn, that ship turn like that. We know that this is all part of the Most High's plan. This is all part of switching the blessings to the curses. We're going to take a little bit deeper look into these names that we're seeing right now as far as on the side of the ship. 
one sh now before we do that take a look see there a guy said oh well it'll be okay it went up to like five or six percent i heard as far as the uh, oil, oil prices fuel prices he says and that'll be okay if it's only for a day or two see these guys went in uh had someone, one of the new, uh, the main Dutch guys came over and tried to figure out, you know, how to actually get the ship unstuck, you know, and this is what he said. Grounded Suez Canal mega ship is blocking shipments worth $9.5 billion per day with enormous consequences for global economy. As Rescue Chief warns, it could be stuck for weeks. You see, you saw you've been trying your best to get back to normal. Life is normal. And now you're seeing that it says this ship can be stuck here for weeks. Not sounding too good. Not sounding like you're going to be running right back to life is normal. It seems as if everything that you've been trying to get done just blows up in your face. And that's exactly what happens when the curses fall upon you. And we're taking a look at that evergreen, you know, evergreen. And um, sometimes, like I said, I like to let mu um, movies play, music play when I'm studying or when I'm reading, you know, sometimes. So again, I'm kind of looking at this, you know, right here, I'm looking at evergreen. Okay, because the name of the ship was the Ever something. Let me see here. I have the pictures. Let me see. Ever Giving. So the name of the company, the big, huge Evergreen, but the name of that ship is Ever Giving. So you kind of look here because it kind of Ever Giving, Ever Green. Seems like over in, uh, maybe that's how they use it, you know, a little bit different with the L Ever. So I'll take a look at with you know I'm trying to figure out how evergreen works out. It says ever is also an adverb. Okay, it says I simply gave into him and I uh, regretted it ever since. And another way of saying like uh, you use ever in the expressions ever such and ever so to emphasize that someone or something has a particular quality, especially when you are expressing enthusiasm or gratitude. When I met Derek, okay, he was ever such a good dancer. Like I think a, like a quality right there, okay? I like him ever so much. I'm ever so greatly. So you're kind of like emphasizing that particular quality, okay? So the name of the ship is Evergreen. I was like, okay, Evergreen, you know, all right green something you know it's got a particular quality or whatever else well while i was kind of looking at this i had the movie again playing of lord of the rings and there was a particular scene that it happened to just be on when aragon was kind of like daydreaming back to uh talking to the father of erwin or whatever else the uh, the elf the she elf and he's like um you know she's only staying here because of you and I'm not going to let my daughter stay here and die. He goes, We're, let her go to the lands of the West. And then he says something, something like ever, like the evergreen lands. I was like, what are the odds that I'm just happening to be looking at this? And all of a sudden I'm going to hear the words, you know, evergreen. And then evergreens are being like um, compared to the lands of the West, the holy lands of the West, the beautiful lands of the West. So this company has this big old evergreen on it. And you can kind of like be um, referring to these evergreen lands or, you know, the lands that the Most High had given to his people. So you got that whole big old thing right there, evergreen. And knowing now that they had taken our lands, all these other countries, and that trade was all based upon the resources that they were getting from these evergreen lands our lands the lands rich in resources and it's kind of like a slap in the face when you got like a big old ship sitting right there and you see evergreen knowing that that is referring to our holy lands and our resources and those resources 
were being um, transported on these huge ships. So it's not a it's not a coincidence that you're looking at all these pictures of this huge ship and it's saying evergreen, referring to our holy lands. Now, you look at the next, that's like the name of the company or whatever else, but then on the ship, it's actually called ever giving. So always giving. Okay, now I could be referring to our lands, always giving resources, but it could also mean, you know, let me see if I put it up here, right here, giving. I know I looked at thesaurus, other words for giving and offering, but I'm also looking at granting, ever granting. The Most High was it was uh, good to you, and he granted these lands to you. He granted the resources to you, other nations. He granted the Most High's people into you know, your, your rulership. You could rule over his people while you were under the blessings. So you got a lot of things going on with this ship, ever granting or you know, ever giving. And that's, what they, and that's what the Most High's been. He's been giving you guys uh, your blessings, but you never give him credit. You never say, thank you, Most High, for blessing us. Thank you for giving us the Holy Lands. Thank you for giving us the Holy People. Thank you for giving us the resources. And we'll see what other what other things you guys put together with the evergreen and the ever giving. I'm sure many, many brethren will come up with some more information, some more connections. And you please put it in the comment section. Okay, because I'm sure we got a lot of very smart Hebrews around here. Now, I was reading out of this book this weekend, and I came across some pretty interesting information, but I didn't put it into a video yet because I didn't feel like the most I wanted me to use it just yet. Then all of a sudden, this story comes up with this ship, and it connects absolutely perfectly with this information right here. So I said, this is just the most high. He's just prepping me for, he's already, you know, he was already prepping me for what's going to be happening this week with this ship and putting this information together. And if you're not sure, uh, hey, if anybody wants to watch the, what is it, the Two Towers story um, <clears throat> that goes along with what we're reading right now, or, you know, the whole thing with Evergreen, the section is right before they got into the fight with the wolves. And it's when they were actually, okay walking to uh, their fortress, Helm's Deep. So right when they were doing, right before they got into that big fight, Aragon's talking to uh, one of the women and she was asking about the jewelry. And then he's kind of like zones off and that's where that part is. Okay, if you want to see it for yourself. Like I said, it just happened to be studying, doing a little study on Evergreen uh, and trying to get some information. And then that part of the movie just popped out right then. Didn't really put those connections together. But, hey, that's the most high for you. When the most high wants you to bring it out, he'll supply everything that you need. Okay? So right now, we're going to take a look at this one right here. The two nations that changed the world, America and Britain. And this is going to be going into uh, their blessing. Okay? And this is, let me see here, page 138. Okay? And we're going to read here where it says, the Anglo-American control the strategic sea gates. I said, I kid you not. I read this this weekend. It was good information, but you know, wasn't ready to put it into a video just yet. And then the Most High has this happen on Wednesday. It says while wealth and industry depend on natural resources, prosperity on a national level comes by commerce which is predominantly conducted by utilizing the sea lanes of the world. How significant then are strategic sea gates, economically and militarily? As noted earlier, God promised Abraham that his descendants says, would uh, possess the gates of their enemies. Okay, Genesis 22, 17, 24 and 60. The term gate is used throughout the Old Testament to refer to the entryways into cities and towns. Genesis 23, 18. 
For example, as such as uh, it is widely used to refer, okay, in the city itself, Daniel 17 and 8, 24, 14. For example, but like Israel of old, America and Britain have never occupied enemy lands and cities except for brief periods. In the context of the birthright promise, promises uh, made to Abraham okay, and his descendants, gates must refer to something more, such as passageways that provide strategic control of commercial shipping or military movement. Such vital uh, sea gates would include the Panama and Suez canals, the Cape of Good Hope, the Strait of Gibraltar, and many other strategic passageways and ports, okay, of somewhat lesser strategic uh, importance. America and Britain have controlled each of the above sea gates throughout the modern era, and each has been uh, critical to the economic and military dominance. In fact, the Allied victory in World War II hinged on such gates. For a time, Britain came to control much of the oil produced in the Middle East. Her possessions uh, and pipelines in that re region helped provide the uh, oil and uh, the allies needed. And transporting the oil depended on controlling certain sea gates. Okay, and that's the main part I want to talk about right there, sea gates. So all of a sudden, you know, we're talking about sea gates in this story or in this information right here. And then on Wednesday, the Most High flipped this ship. So now you're looking at the side of Evergreen, Holy Lands. Okay, ever giving. Most High gave them all of their opportunities to control our resources. Now all of a sudden, this ship is, is flipped, blocked the main, the, the sea gate, and now all of a sudden they're losing tens of billions of dollars a day. He said the Most High makes these connections. And there's this part right here about what is going on and like why things are going bad. One of the main reasons here why things are going bad, of course, because their time is up. But have Britain and America perceived the hand of God? says, the vast blessings showered on Britain and America have come with sobering responsibilities. First, there is the need to acknowledge that such blessings were directly from the Most High. Secondly, there is the obligation to use such blessings okay, in a responsible and wise manner. And we know that they have not. We know that Britain and America have not. So that's why things are now falling apart. I mean, amongst the reasons, the fact that you guys have had, you know, your four to 500 years of your blessings and that time is over. So now you see why we got that evergreen right there in front of our faces, talking about the Holy Lands. And that's where they got all of these resources from. How they were supposed to use the their control of the Holy Land for good, and they haven't. Evergreen, forever green lands. Ever giving, the Most High has given you this blessing for hundreds and hundreds of years. And you've done nothing but go out of your way to hide who we are. Hide who the lands belong to. Hide who the children of the Most High are. They're still here. Now they've been awakened. And we can see, because the Most High gives us the, you know, the, ear, the eyes to see and the ears to hear the truth. And realizing that this takedown was much bigger than just the so-called little strip of land in the Middle East. And now the takeover again and they're giving back the things back to the most high chosen people is going to be on an absolutely enormous scale. So you imagine when they actually, these numbers start to come out, they're trying to hide about how bad things are getting again with the plague. 
then you start to see about this ship here being stuck for weeks, causing economic turmoil worldwide. On top of whatever else the theme multi is about to bring out even more so. You got the uh, you know the collapse again and the shutdown of Europe again. You got volcanic activity in Iceland. You got things going on everywhere. You got a lot of things going on in Australia. So there's things going on everywhere because the Most High is moving to restore his people. Those shipping lanes and the control of them were all part of the blessing as well. We had those blessings before, even though they're trying to hide it, make it sound like they're the only ones that have experienced this kind of control and dominance. But that's okay now because the Most High is not using them. They're not the ones who are going to be bringing the, the, the light into the world. They're not going to be the Gentiles, are not going to be the ones to bring this information to the world. The Most High is going to use his people to bring this light and understanding to the world, not the Gentiles. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.